In the middle of the Irish Sea is the remote and breathtaking Isle of Man. It's a serene place where for 50 weeks of the year the pace of life can only be called relaxed. But for the other fortnight it's mad, dangerous and deadly. Motor racing legend Mark Scaife is about to take us full throttle to the most thrilling motorcycle race in the world to meet the men and women who risk everything in pursuit of two-wheeled glory. It is absolutely just beyond your wildest dreams to think that you could come here and race a motorcycle. The Isle of Man TT is like a religion. It's the oldest motorcycle race in the world. You can stand on the footpath and you could literally reach out and touch the riders going past at close to 200 miles an hour. The houses are passing you so quick, sometimes it feels like you're inside a video game. It's frightening. It's damn dangerous and it stresses me out. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Mark, this is the greatest motorsport event in the world. Between Ireland and Britain, in the Irish Sea, sits the Isle of Man. A sleepy tax haven for most of the year. to witness the most dangerous road race on earth. It's about 200 kilometers an hour, straight at the front here, absolute lunacy. I want to find out what drives these riders to test themselves and their machines in a brutal event called the TT, the Tourist Trophy. There's a lot to get right and a lot that can go wrong, so it, it is part sprint race part endurance race and it's a time trial so it's so unique peter brock used to say that great race tracks have got consequences the isle of man tt is the ultimate road course it's the fastest wildest and most dangerous racetrack i've ever seen And for the riders that compete here, there is absolutely no room for error. In its 104 years, 234 riders have died. It says on the back of your pass that motor racing is dangerous. This is dead set dangerous, isn't it? It is, it really is. It's, uh, it's frightening. Aussie rider Cameron Donald is one of over 200 starters this year. And when you add the fans, it's like an invasion. With Cameron is his girlfriend Karen, herself a keen motorcyclist. They've been planning for the race all year. So is this normal nervous start um, tension? Kind of is. Normal is just <laughs> done the night yeah, before. Is, yeah. is it? Or late night last night, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Usually we like to have this done the night before, everything, but by the time we finish, like 11 o'clock, we just like to get out of here and worry about it tomorrow. So what's Karen's job in this world? <laughs> um, keep me calm. <laughs> we were born without time, nameless in the arm. Cameron grew up in Warrandyte in Victoria. It was his dad, Ken, who introduced him to the thrill of the two-wheeler. Lots of bike photos, not, not many other ones. No, we, <laughs> we had it consumed a fair bit of time, didn't it? <laughs> it, did. it took up a lot of time. From a young age, Cameron began winning and winning. 
I remember mum actually saying to me, you know, you can't, when you're gonna buy or build a house, you can't live in a motorbike. And I remember saying to her, yeah, mum, you can't race a house. So I think then she just uh, pretty much gave up. <laughs> The TT is held over a fortnight. One week for practice, one week for racing, seven races in all. And in between, the public can go flat out. No speed limit on the Island Road course. Everyone that races here knows the dangers and they accept them and they do their best to ride accordingly. But I think it's sad in this world that we're all so wrapped in cotton wool these days and there's so few opportunities to do anything dangerous. For Cameron, a plumber when he's not racing, there's no event bigger than this. Riders set off at 10 second intervals. It's all about the fastest lap of the island and that's what makes it so pure and so dangerous. You sit on the start line, you're looking down that first hill and uh, because it's not a mass start, you're sitting there getting waved off one at a time. The, the pressure on you, you know, everyone's looking at you and it's, uh, it's a rush I've never had out of any other, any other race. There's just uh, so few events in the world where we can do such a thing, you know, where you can close off a road and, and race a motorbike around it. It's, such a beautiful thing. 61 kilometres of public roads. Over 200 corners to be negotiated. Top speed, 330 kilometres an hour. This isn't a track. <laughs> this, is a, this is a country road. Like, let's not get this wrong. And it's fast. My friend and five times world champion Mick Doohan has come here for the first time. Sort of madness, you know. He's not racing, but on the parade lap, he got a taste of what it's like. First reaction. As soon as you saw the place, looked around, what was your first reaction? Yeah, I didn't need to come here to have that reaction. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, as I say, it, it really, you know, the, it is absolutely just beyond your wildest dreams to think that you could come here and race a motorcycle. The race has always had its critics, but from the start, its danger was its attraction. Back then, racing was banned in England, and the island was the only place where there were no speed limits. The TT was born. The voice of motorsport, Murray Walker. You've got a great history here, haven't you? You've been how many years? First of all, let me say it's great to see a great Australian at a great race. Uh, to answer your question, Mark, I first came here in 1925. I was born in 1923. Uh, my father won here. I don't know how many times I've been here. Many, many, many times. In his 88 years, Murray Walker has seen some very good riders. And impressing him this year is our Aussie rider, Cameron. He's got a good bike, he's got some good backing, and he's still got the most important race of the week to come. So maybe, hopefully, he'll get it done. Each time Cameron sets out is an exercise in courage. Each lap is an anxious one for Karen, who gets radio updates on his progress. I see the worry in her face before I head out for a race and sometimes I feel a little bit guilty for putting people close to me through that stress. In the week I was there, seven people lost their lives. Three riders and four members of the public. ACU Events Limited regret to announce the death of Derek Bryan. I've lost a, a, a couple of friends in, in my years racing at the Isle of Man and I do think of them in the corners that they've... Uh, They've fallen in, and uh, where Dobsey crashed is one of the most intense corners on the track. Dobsey, Paul Dobbs, died in the TT last year. He lost his life to the sport that he loves, like so. Just one there, mate. Paul was buried on the island, leaving behind his wife and two daughters. So what did you love about him? Um, God, everything. Race you. Bridget is Paul's wife. 
A year on, she's brought the girls back to remember their dad at the race he loved. You know it's risky, of course you do. I mean, you know, everyone loves those photos of riders' heads this far from a stone wall. You know, obviously, the reason you love those photos is you can think, oh my God, it's so close, you know? That's, um, it's, it's, you know, other people have said that you only really know that you're alive when you're almost not. Some are just plain lucky to survive, like Connor Cummins. I can actually see, you know, where it's all gone wrong. I've disappeared over the side, and the way I look at it, that's where, you know, the injury started to happen, and it's sort of, it does get to you a little bit. We'll just get on with life. <laughs> we're really ain't gonna stop for me. Has your opinion of the TT changed based on what's no. happened? No. No. Do you think it should be banned? You can't possibly ban it. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know if you could ban it if you tried. It's. It's like a monster, you know, it's, it's bigger than the rest of us. Riders don't come here for the prize money. There's hardly any. The TT is simply about the glory of being the fastest. And for Cameron, it was a glorious week. In his chosen race, the Superbikes, he was just pipped for first. But second still felt pretty good. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Really good, huh? When will you settle down and stop doing this? I don't see it too far away. I never saw racing the Isle of Man as a long-term prospect because, look, it is so dangerous, and I do see it as a numbers game. If you keep coming back, sooner or later, um, I see it's going to catch you out. Yeah.